Welcome to a show about things you can see without going far, and a lot of them are free. If you thought there was nothing in the old heartland, you ought to hit the black op with these fools in a van. Look out, they're driving hard, checking out art in their own backyard. Randy does the steering so he won't hurl. Mike got the map, such a man of the world. That's done with the camera, kinda heavy on his shoulder. And that giant ball of tape, it's a world record holder. Look out, they're driving hard, checking out art in their own backyard. Look out, they're driving hard, checking out the world in their own backyard. Checking out the world in their own backyard. Dear TV Mailbag, has my ride arrived? Hi, Don the Camera Guy here with more close quarters of the minivan kind. No, it's not a cramped Chrysler now, though I do expect a tight fit nonetheless, especially since our rooftop remedy doesn't seem to fit. How can we make TV? However, our first stop of the day is so close by, I haven't had time to miss it yet. Talk about your own backyard. Come on. Right here. Check this out. But it's the front yard. Well, it's actually the front yard, yes, but is that not beautiful? That's right up our alley. Look at how nice it lays out on the side. That's one of the prettiest walls I've ever seen. And yeah, you're right, the history of bowling, it's all it's all there, you know, from the nine pound balls to the to the big boy balls. Can I say big boy balls on TV? I don't think so. Apparently you can. And apparently even without a roof rack, we're still quite capable of well, getting lost. Though these two producers sure hate to admit it. I think it's back the other way. I think we're... When did you think that? What? I mean, why else would you keep driving in circles on the same side streets down by the river in KCK? Well, you know, how can we get lost? We haven't even left our own city yet. We're in our own backyard. <laughs> This exercise in fuel inefficiency is all about finding one J.G. Woods. Oh, wait a minute, there it is. And apparently we've stumbled upon him in this small house alongside Wenzel Steel, where John works on pieces peppered with puns, a practice he began years ago in sunny Southern California. This is a Paris in the spring. This is a, a life turned completely upside down. Tides down and the surf's up, stretching the truth. VD on the rise. This is when you, when you join the Navy, you see the world. Actually, John did join the Navy, worked as a map maker, aerospace engineer, and even ran a collectible shop near downtown LA. At a time when the lake in MacArthur Park was undergoing a most dramatic transformation. They drained it in 73, and then they drained again in 76. And I had, uh, sometimes I had 20, 30 homeless people working for me, digging stuff out of the lake. And the stuff they dug out of the lake, they brought to me. And you said to yourself, perfect opportunity? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I made a lot of pieces like this. This is, I call this pipe dreams. I call this pipe dreams because it's all different kinds of pipes cigarette lighters, lighters here from A to Z, Ace to Zeus. At one time I probably had about 150 pounds of keys. So I said I have the keys to the city of Los Angeles. You know, people ask me sometimes, they said to me, do you take stuff and put it on there that didn't come out of the lake? I said, well, you know, I said, I, sometimes I've been tempted to, but I said, you know, I, I felt that the thing could stand by itself. So why give it a crutch if it don't need one? What I was trying to do was document a history of a people and a time and a place. And then people came along and said, oh, that's art. I said, no, it isn't, it's history. So then people said, you know, you're an artist. And I said, hell no, I'm not an artist. I'm a failure at everything, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, I'm just documenting history. That's why I told people, if you, if you like what I did, it's okay. If you don't like what I did, that's okay. But in 100 years, nobody ever did it before, and nobody can ever do it again. So what's that contraption back there? Wh what's that? The big piece there that you're working on. Oh, this it's the name game. 
So I've got a, over 100 women's names here and over 100 men's names over there. This is Holly. There's Brad. There's Jennifer. There's Brooke. Oh. Goldie? No, that's Angie. Yeah, I was gonna say that. That's was... Angie. Yeah. There's Goldie. And this is Chuck. We know the drill. What's this? That's Rex. That's uh, Chester. Buster. Buster. Chester. Chester. But why do they call it the name game? Well, because you, because you just. <laughs> yeah, the, and here this is this is uh, uh, Teresa, Teresa, Teresa. This is Burl. I had trouble with this one because this I put a Frankfurt up there, and the dog keep eating it every time I put a Frankfurt up there. The dogs eat it. We can do this all day. Then again, this is a TV show, so we've got places to go and people to see. We left John at work in the front yard, working on another piece, and began working our way westward. Destination Lawrence, home of KU, this camera guy, and for the last few years since she moved from Michigan, Betty Milliken too. Ninety-three years young and still yodeling, Betty's getting noticed for the art she makes using things people don't usually make art with. These are, these are pears and uh, apple pulp. This is a leaf. Quite a lot of this is chewing gum, sometimes in combination with window clock, breadcrumbs, anything she had on hand. She'd combine them together to see how they did, and if they fell apart, Okay, but if they didn't, well, she could try and do it again. I quit smoking for a while there and then different things. And I put some gum in my mouth and said, oh, gee, what am I going to do with this wad? I hate to throw this away. I thought, aha, uh -huh. oh, I can make things out of this. You just uh, take the gum and she already chewed it. And I put it on top of the pencil and then I just roll it around. By rolling around, you you get little heads and little things that pinch, pinch a little ear or whatever. Had you seen someone do it before? No, no. I never even seen it in a book. Nishki baba, a tight toad. All chewing gum. I think she was mixing it mostly with foot powder early on. Maybe a little face powder. I like, I like this one a uh, lot. That's Joe Namath. She did a variety of famous people. Is juicy fruit the best or dentine? Yeah, yes, I'll tell you. And um, you don't have to fool around with those others. Well, oh, maybe you like that, but but I like Cinna Burst. That has a certain body. This is styrofoam meat tray, and I think this is acrylic. She liked to use meat tray a lot. In fact, I think this is meat tray, meat tray, meat tray. Well, no, maybe not. Yeah. Sounds like a French term. Mitre. It is mitre. Mitre. Ah, oui. Yodelé, oliolé, aliolé. I can't believe the things oh, okay. I made myself. I just love challenges. Yodelé, aliolé, aliolé, lady. Betty's loved to sing for a long, long time. She also enjoys acupressure, giving as well as receiving, so who am I to argue? However, duty calls. So after bidding these two adieu, we climbed back in the van, headed over the bridge, and started looking for my mailman. Not for professional purposes, but because Tom Krause is a true musical master of pots, pans, and various household items. I make instruments out of found objects.
People give me stuff. I got this trash can kid lit lid from a guy on my mail route. And you know, one of the nice things about getting something from somebody you know is you remember it's from somebody you know. It's got a smaller serration out here than it does here, so you can. This is the top of a salt shaker. When I go shopping, it's, it's an interesting experience to watch. This was a room curtain. These things here are these. They're saw blades, you know. They're saw blades? They're saw blades. Pink Floyd. The bottles won't play anything fast. You can't you know, play can't, wipe out. Can't play wipe out. Of all the nifty noisemakers Tom had on hand, we were particularly tickled by the Tommy Slapper. Simple enough for even a TV weasel to master. Well, sort of. So let me just say thanks again for braving wind and rain and all that stuff to bring me my meager paycheck. Tom the Mailman, play us to the postcard. Those would be some of the Flint Hills, flying by what some astute observers might note is yet another Brando van, one that's complete with car top carrier. Pulling up now at Don Crott's house on the south side of Junction City. Mr. Crott taught junior high math for years and years, but that's not why we're here. We're here to see the castle he's been building in his own backyard. I knew there was water underground, and uh, I decided I'd put a pond back there, and then I uh, had pushed some of the dirt up to the middle to make an island. So the question then became, what do you put on the island? Wow, look at this. Look at this. I started in the fall of uh, 92 on this project right here. And then I bought an old stone house just down the road about four miles. That's where I got the majority of the stone. Have you had a previous life as a stone worker? No, no. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hate to get back to this math teacher thing too much, <laughs> but most of the guys teaching algebra mm -hmm. and, and uh, stuff don't do this, do they? Well, I, I don't know. Uh, some of them probably do. I do. <laughs> but this is the drawbridge here. You can raise this side up here. Does it go up? Yeah. Go. All right. Look at that. Yeah. Let me I'll put some light on it. <laughs> Did you read about castles a lot as a kid? Was this something that you've always had a... No, no, not at all, really. Uh, I just thought that would be real nice back here on this island, that's all. But I did look up at a lot of pictures after I had the idea, but I have no particular idea where the thing came from or anything. About five or six years ago, I had a couple stop in, and I was working back down here, and this wasn't all here at this point. And she said, how long has it been falling down? <laughs> I says, no, we're going the other way. <laughs> Here's kind of a sketch to give you some idea. You know, see the hot tub down there below? That's this turret right here when I get her done here. And the little turret on the other side, this one over here is right here. Yeah. A little turret, right? Turret. Yeah. It sounded like the little turret on the other side. <laughs> I was talking about you. <laughs> Do they call it Crot's Castle? Does it have? Uh, no, Castle Island is the name of it, but it's not that widely known for people. It's just the castle. I do have the teachers come out uh, once a year. We have a Chislick party. Uh huh. Chislick sure. is uh, mutton on a little bar stick, and we barbecue them. And I get it from South Dakota up there and bring it down here. Chislick. Addictive. Chislick. Yeah. <laughs> 
I got to ask, were the neighbors saying, what is Don doing? I didn't tell anybody for a while what I was doing out here. And finally I said, well, what do you, you know, they asked me, what are you doing? I think I'm going to make a castle up there. I'm very pleased that people appreciate what they see and enjoy. So they're welcome to come out anytime, as a lot of them do. So yeah, it's a great retreat. And I'm slowly, uh, I can see the end of this thing now, see? <laughs> Speaking of retreats, looks like the Squires found a way to keep out the riffraff. I, I didn't hear that, did it go off? Which might explain our hasty retreat. No, no Chislick today, though apparently lunch does await us in Salina. Or at least the meat eaters up front who are all abuzz about catching a cozy, which can only be caught at this landmark hole in the wall downtown. The code of the cozy calls for onions, lots of onions, and don't ever ask about cheese. 764 million. That's the way it's always been here, and folks buy them by the bag, much like White Castle, which, and can this be coincidence, started the very same year. Pretty good, huh? I'm good. Yeah, thank you. Anyway, the veggie cozy leaves a little to be desired. But we left with more than enough odor for all, some of which we hope to leave in the great outdoors. Somewhere like Rock City, that geologic marvel up the road in Minneapolis, where some quick catch is calling our names. Rock and fire. Okay, great rock baseball pit rock. Rocky Colavito. Rock Hudson. Hey, do you play for the Colorado Rockies? It's been a while since we played Kansas Cats. How long's it been? Stone Ages, I think. This is great. I could stay out here and do this all day. I don't think you can. Oh. <laughs> Has the owner seen us already? Concretions are cool, whatever they are, but we must proceed on, and that means proceeding on to Highway 18 which runs right into Lincoln. Though along the way, there are plenty of large metallic distractions to distract us. Jim Dickerman welds them, so you'll be more inclined to buy the small ones he sells in town. This is an old shoe cobbler's shoe repair horn, sickle guard, 10-speed uh, bicycle handlebars. Here's my answer to a pig flamingo. It's the cross between a turtle and a pink flamingo. This is the old pig water. This, this is a offset disc, disc cleaners. This is bicycle front forks. This is a big old pickaxe. That's another bicycle. A pair of pliers, handle. That's an old stove handle. That's a gooseneck to a bicycle. So you spending a lot of time going to the city dump? Not a lot. I got a lot of friends that have a lot of kids that's, you know, got older and stuff. But I do go there. This here is an old catalytic converter. Bicycle handlebars, and then that's out of a field cultivator bull ring nose, and then this is old iron headboard, and then this is out like I have a 20 inch bicycle. This is out of a field cultivator. I try to take the same principles by uh, using the shapes that are already there and putting them together without modifying them too much. These are all, these are vertebrae out of cows. This is out of a pelvis bone of a cow. Vertebrae, two vertebrae out of a cow, and then this is another pelvis bone, just painted with leather glued in. Hey man, what's up? Kansas Viking. I try to get as much movement and life to them as I can, as much personality as I can to them. And with a halfway decent paint job in my eyes, gives them a little bit more chance of being alive and you know, gives them that personality. I've been making them for over 20 years, my little ones. Just in the last year and a half, I started making uh, my bigger ones. Motorcycle gas tank, it's two oil pans, it's a mineral feeder for cows and sheet metal. And this looks like a reflector strips all over it. Yeah, at night when you come by, you can really get a good different image of it. I've got a lot more activity since I started making big ones. Because, you know, nobody can see these as good. I've welded for over 20 years and this is my outlet. I see pieces and parts, you know. I always thought that I couldn't draw very good, but I can weld. Well, here's something Jim didn't make that's starting to look awfully good to me now. Starlight, star bright, sleep like a Lincoln log tonight. Chiseling, huh?
Okay, it's a brand new day on the same road, still in the same van, heading for a place that never fails to amaze us. I mean, Lucas truly is the grassroots art capital of the universe, sporting a true triple thread in the space of just a few blocks. S.P. Dinsmore's Grand Garden of Eden, the ever-growing grassroots art center, and the late Florence Diebel's Rock Garden, which the center now owns and, from all indications, has been taken to the proverbial next level. Marie Pilar is who uh, has created this interior environment. Uh, there is a, uh, an apartment, and so a part of the time she's living here, and she gives the tours when she's here. She calls this installation the Garden of Isis Star Clock. And Isis, of course, is the mothering nature. And she also feels what is, is. So uh, whatever's happening in your life is meant to be uh, at that current time. And, and she wants people to look at, uh, you know, recycled things in a new way. You just take what you've got laying around the house or in the kitchen drawer and you look at it with new eyes. And everybody in the community has brought, uh, you'll see the piece over there, cattle ear tags or jewelry. I've given her some jewelry and then you'll come in here the next time and oh, oh, there's my, <laughs> my necklace or my earrings. I think Florence would like it. She, she would, you know, if you, you, you've met Florence, Florence and, and uh, well, we had no purpose for the house, you know, at the, the current time, and uh, this just presented itself, and, and you know, it just is wonderful. Roslyn is a true force of nature, always expanding her Main Street Museum with more and more works by untrained Kansans, as seen on this show making Lucas even more enticing to more and more artists, which is why our tour of the town isn't quite done yet. You are here today to see the world's largest collection of the world's smallest versions of the world's largest things, traveling roadside attraction and museum. Phew. It's in the backyard. This very vehicle used to serve the general public as an old folks transportation unit from Garnet, Kansas. Wait a minute, so, the world's largest badger, now that's the gas station in Wisconsin? Uh-huh, Burnhamwood. Burnhamwood, yep. yes. We've seen that. We've been there. They, they said that it was gone, but actually it just got turned into a strip joint. <laughs> largest talking cow. Uh, Chatty Bell? Chatty Bell. Yes. I, I, the, we don't know the otter. The otter, otter I don't know. Fergus Falls, Minnesota. Uh, this is the whole U.S. right there at your fingertips. One of the unwritten rules is I cannot make a replica unless I've actually seen the world's largest thing for myself. I am now about 50 replicas behind. There are additional displays inside, all the research, all the photos. It is the world's largest collection of the world's smallest versions of the world's largest things, traveling, roadside attraction, and museum. When I lived in the bus full time, I yeah. lived in the bus for about two years, yeah. which when I don't have shoes on, it's exactly the right height. Ooh, you're getting a behind the scenes peek here. Since I was going to traveling roadside, or roadside attractions anyway and making replicas, I figured I would just combine my living environment with what I was exploring. You show up and you just work there on site and make the replica and people... Yeah, sometimes if I have the supplies on hand, sometimes I photograph first, go away, make the replica and come back and do meta photos. So when I have the world's smallest version, I can have it visit the world's largest thing that was its... Namesake. Whatever it was. So you actually are, you know, a, a schooled artist of sorts. Yes. I, mean, I don't want to drag you through the muck here. Yeah, I, yes, uh, unfortunately I am trained as an artist, but I have not let that stop me. Uh, whenever I do send in slides of this to uh, real art places, they pretty much just send them right back going, we don't know what this is. So this is the world's largest collection of the world's smallest versions of the world's largest things, traveling roadside attraction and museum. What do you so, ask of people? I ask that people appreciate Roadside America, get off the interstate and actually see some of the amazing things that are around because this is where stuff happens. You can't get it in the generic strip malls. Also, the new slogan for the year, combating Genericana. It's a call to arms. Build something cool. Build something big. We'll come and see it. Then again, some places deliver. For better or worse, when it comes to balls of videotape, we're pretty certain this is the world's largest. And yes, we'd be pleased if Erica would do her big, small, big thing with it. Hey, whatever I can do to help. 
This is Don the Camera Guy, signing off. That could do way, uh... To learn more about the sights on this show and how to find them, visit us on the web at rarevisionsroadtrip.com. DVDs, tapes, and a companion book to this series are available by calling 1-800-459-9733. This is uh, not on the level. You drive downtown, there's a sign that says Big Peanut that way. Great sign, small peanut. Size matters.